Hello, welcome again. Today I will discuss on feathered cord. Normally, as the spine flexes and extends, the spinal cord is free to move up and down within the spinal canal. If the spinal canal is fixed at any point, this movement is restricted and the spinal cord and the nerve roots can be uh, become stretched. This fixing of spinal cord without underlying etiology is called a tethered cord. When pain, neurologic deterioration, or bladder and the bowel dysfunction occurs in response to this fixation, it is called the tethered cord syndrome. Normally, phylum terminal stendis as a thin, very mobile structure from the tip of the conus to the sacrococcygeal region where it attaches. When this structure is thickened and or shortened, the cord can become tethered. This stretching between two points can cause symptoms later in life. Other conditions that cause symptomatic tethering include various forms of occult dystrophism, such as lipomeningomyelocele, myelocystocele, diastematomelia, and these conditions can be associated with cutaneous manifestations such as midline lipomas, asymmetry of the glutal fold, dimples, and hair patch called hypertrichosis. Other causes of symptomatic tethering cord can be previous closure of an upper meningomyelocele, which later becomes symptomatic with pain or neurologic deterioration, and iatrogenic causes such as scarring of the spinal cord in patients who have undergone surgical procedures that disrupt the pial surface of the spinal cord. When we came to clinical manifestation of tethered cord, patients at risk for subsequent development of tethered cord syndromes can often be identified at birth by the presence of an open meningomyelocele or cutaneous manifestation of dystrophism such as lipoma, dermal sinus, tail or hair paste. So we should have to examine the back of every newborn. However, cutaneous abnormalities might be absent in patients with tethered spinal cord. They, they present this later in life with clinical manifestation. So the clinical presentation or clinical manifestation of tether record can be asymptomatic or they may become symptomatic later in life. Patients who become symptomatic later in life generally present with one of the following clinical manifestations. The first one is orthopedic presentation. Asymmetry of the feet with smaller and high arched foot with clawing of the toes, which is called neuroarthropathic syndrome, and also scoliosis can also be present in science. The other manifestation might be due to bowel and the bladder symptoms, increased urinary urgency, which may progress to incontinency, and constipation progress to incontinency. The other possible presentation can be pain. Severe generalized back pain, often radiating into the lower extremity, can occur. So they can present as orthopedic presentation, bowel bladder symptoms, and the neurologic pain. When a patient presents with symptoms related to the tethered cord syndrome, first we should have to do sort of motor and sensory examination of the patients, and we should have to document them. And the next is assessment of bladder function with ultrasound of the bladder and the urodynamic studies to analyze bladder innervation and the bladder function. MRI is a diagnostic study of choice, which tells us anatomy of the tethering lesion and to provide information about the risk of surgical intervention. The management of tethered cord syndrome is always surgical. There is no non-surgical management of tethered cord syndrome. The outcome of surgery depends on the complexity of the underlying lesion, the presenting condition of the child, and releasing a chicken phylum terminal or Detethering of patients with diastomatomalia generally yields a good outcome. The chance of recurrent symptom is very low. Patients with symptomatic tethered cord who undergo repair of meningomyelocele or lipomeningomyelocele have a significant possibility of recurrent tethering and recurrent symptoms. This is all about tethered cord. Thank you for watching and subscribing to my channel.